Uh, welcome everybody to the Harder Not Smarter podcast. Today we have an amazing guest, Herb Thompson, who I'm sure if you're on LinkedIn at all and a veteran, you've seen his posts and undoubtedly seen his phenomenal beard that is uh, is the envy of most guys that are still in the service. But Iconic. Herb was a uh, former Army Drill Sergeant of the Year turned Green Beret, apparently the, the one and only to have done that. And now he's gone on to being a massive veteran advocate on the uh, on the civilian side. He's also been the author of the book, The Transition Mission, where he breaks down the military transition truths, and we can get into those in a bit. But he, his story is absolutely incredible. He's, he started off as a kid growing up in a trailer park, and I know at one point he posted about how they were actually evicted from the trailer park. And from that moment, he's basically been so determined to outwork everybody else that he would never be in that situation again, that his, his work ethic and his determination uh, going forward has been unstoppable. So Herb, thank you for coming on the show. We're looking forward to this conversation. No, I'm I'm excited. Looking forward to this, fellas. And you said about, you know, being drill sergeant of the year in a Green Beret. And, and still when I go like to any store, they don't have my own parking spot. Like no one cares, but I keep trying to make people care. <laughs> we can run out there and uh, I, can, I can drive a stake into the ground. You know, it doesn't cost that much to buy them anymore. <laughs> you should just carry one. Yeah, oh, yeah, I carry my own. Like, yeah, exactly. Just drop it in wherever you go. Just put it out in front. So, when uh, when you got out, when did thinking about it? When was the uh, the inspiration to get this phenomenal beard going? Oh yeah, jeez. Uh, I mean, probably most of my last three years in, I had a beard. Not to this, but kind of like how you guys look right now. Uh, and it was actually like a ethical dilemma of my clearing process i had to i was able to do everything in civilian clothes but my final turn in with of equipment and i was like i'm not shaving like what are they gonna do to me i retire next week like so i just took all the patches off my uniform and walked in there with my beard and stuff and they're like hey and i was like i'm in a uniform you didn't say you had to have patches on so i did that and then when i walked out the 101st airborne new crop of like 400 joes were showing up so like i walk out in my uniform and beard and they're like oh my god because it's all these junior enlisted um <laughs> but really it was like hey for 20 years like even back when i was drill sergeant high and tight you know shaved with a razor and i was like i'm not gonna do that more i'm gonna be myself really for 20 plus years i was told what to do how to do it when to do it for the most part i'm gonna be myself and just enjoy myself and kind of happened and now like I'm, I'm not turning back so yeah i have a little bit longer hair and a little bit longer beard and keep on rocking it i feel like your experience leaving the army was significantly smoother than mine leaving leaving the marine corps so i, I was a marine first and then i went over to the seals and i remember i went in i love your post about turning everything into the sif um but when i went in to go get my dd 214 like i was done i was out uh i just need to pick up this paperwork and then walk it over to, um, to, to admin. And I just wore a white t-shirt, nothing like normal pants, jeans, I think with, with shoes, but a white t-shirt and the admin clerk's like, that's an undershirt. You need to be wearing a proper t-shirt. I'm like, this, it's a t-shirt. It's, it's white. They're like, exactly. It's an undershirt. You need to go change your shirt before I will give you your DD 214. This just reinforces that I'm making the right decision right now, leaving leaving the Marine Corps before anything bad happens. Exactly. <laughs> and so, in in your in your process of getting out, at what point did you get the inspiration to to write the book? Because that that thing has been going around for a while. I've read it. It's an awesome guide to helping service members figure out what it is they need to do, and also get their their mindset right for what the experience is actually going to be. I, I dove into my transition because I, like said, hey, when I was younger, I got kicked out. I didn't have anything to go back to. I joined when I was 17. So it was like, I don't want to be a statistic. Let me figure this out. What do I knew re really well? I know how to work hard and how to plan a mission. The military has spent a lot of time and money and giving me practice at doing this. So that's what I dove into. And as I was doing that, I found I could talk with other people, share some information. I was helping them. And then I was coming back. So roughly six months after I retired, I, I was having phone calls as much as I could with, you know, service members that are in their transition. And uh, one of them, I was driving back from the spine surgeon, talk about, hey, are we going to do surgery on my back? And for an hour and a half, I, I rode 
uh, having this conversation on the way home from the surgeon and uh, the soldier happened to be on their, you know, their leave as they kind of were working some internship as they transitioned out. And th they said, Hey, I'm effing lost. And I was like, okay, let's talk, you know, let's kind of break down the problem and approach it with the skill sets, you know, and possess. And when I got home, which was about 6 PM on like a Friday evening, I was like, I need to do more. Cause like phone calls aren't scalable. Mm -hmm. um, so I, sat down like that night right on the other side of this wall i sat down and i went to um typing and i got up to go to the bathroom and to get some food and drinks and by sunday night i had most of it uh typed out maybe 75 percent of the book typed out that's awesome yeah the the conversations we've been having with with veterans um just hearing about the the struggles that they're facing um that the the issues they're having trying to figure out what it is they're they're going to be doing next in the military or even the worst ones that, that have gotten out they thought they landed an amazing job and um you know they have two hundred thousand two hundred fifty thousand dollar paycheck coming in and they're just like i am absolutely miserable i would rather go down to cut my paycheck in half and be out of here because i'm just I'm not happy with what I'm doing. It's not what I thought it would be. I thought the money would make me happy. I thought being at this big you know, Fortune 500, Fortune 100 company would make me happy. And and none of it is because so many guys have true ownership in the military. I, I just actually talked about um, this. This is my favorite scenario that I've heard from a disastrous transition. This guy was a, a petty officer on board an uh, aircraft carrier. He was the... Uh, one of the, the enlisted guys managing the nuclear reactor on board the, the carrier. So multi-billion dollar piece of equipment um, was something that is obviously very technical and difficult to understand. He gets out and I think it was Tesla. So not talking trash about Tesla. This is just the, the scenario that he told me that he got a job as like the, uh, the graveyard shift or their swing shift with maybe one person underneath them, they're gonna feel it out. And it was like a probationary role to see if he was actually gonna be good enough for the fit. And he's like, I was going from leading a whole section of sailors with some of the most technical equipment. And I'm being screened to make sure I'm okay with working on an assembly line. And there's just a huge gap between what, what service members feel they can provide and what employers think they can actually do with these service members just because of their age. Definitely, and it doesn't, necessary directly translate right there's no easy oh this a to a right apple to apple and just the level of responsibility think about it like i don't care what you're we'll just sit let's take that 20 year old sergeant that's you know 10 years ago maybe a little longer ago was on a street corner in baghdad and really making life and death decisions like very important stuff or a mm -hmm. lieutenant leading a platoon we could go through all kinds of stuff to then come home and go dude can can you sit at this desk all day or can you be a part of this warehouse team and function? And it's like, did you realize the level of responsibility of like life and death, not dollars and cents. And, and that's hard for us. We have to realize, okay, it's a different operating environment and, and, and companies, some are doing it well, but there's always going to be a struggle in it because it doesn't match up or like, wait, these people have actually learned very quickly and had incredible levels of responsibility under circumstances that most people would call their worst day ever. And for many people, that was just an average Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We don't, yeah, we don't have sure. uh, any more snacks in the, in the PX on your, your random fob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the world's coming to an end. But what, what I really loved was, was the truths you came up with. Um, and I'm just going to go through and read them off because I think they're, they're that important um, for, for people to understand. You know, these are all explained in the book. Uh, but I think the more veterans or rather service members hear this before they get out, the better they'll be. Um, so you list them off here. I think there's 11 of them. Um, but the, it starts off with, it takes more effort than you're going to realize. Everyone's transition is unique. The earlier you start, the better. Transition's a team sport, but you have to own your own journey. There's going to be ups and downs. Thank you for your service means just that and nothing more. The more you identify as a service member, the harder it will be. That's a big one. Transition happens for everyone except for our fallen brothers and sisters. You're gonna make mistakes, learn from them. You don't know what you don't know. Success depends solely on your attitude. 
and this is going to be your most important mission. What, uh, what was it that you were doing when you came up with those? I know, I know a lot of them were just your, your own experience, but were those from other conversations? Um, where those come from? Definitely, you know, it starts with my experience. I dove in, Hey, again, I want to figure this out. This is my next mission. And by the time, you know, shortly after I retired, I'd had over 2000 informational interviews because I can make the wrong decision, but God, gosh, darn it. I was going to make an informed decision. So I was just picking from everyone to, what, and then just a little, you know, little bits and pieces from everybody to do that. And then coming back to kind of like our soft truths, but like, what are the actual absolutes in this? Mm -hmm. Like, if we just think of like, okay, how can I translate this to someone hopefully that is like, like myself and my background can understand. It, and that's where I just list. I mean, some of that's kind of, you know, it's like, yeah, whatever, until you're in it and you're like, oh, this is what, this is what he was talking about. Or like, it can be a little ha harsh, right? And it's not meant to be harsh, but it's like, like, thank you for your service. We're so lucky in the United States, the amount of support for better. It's, it's off the and charts. this era, like, uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Every Vietnam era yes. uh, service yeah. member for going through what they did and handling it the way they did so that we are where we are today, where we're not coming back from deployments, getting spit on and uniforms torn up. Like we're actually being thanked as we're walking through the airport. It is, but then there becomes this, the flip side of that is like, oh, like that means I'm going to get a job or that means people know my mm -hmm. value. When I show up, Herb Thompson, retired master sergeant, United States Army, special forces, like people are like, and like, that's cool. I don't you know got a cool anything story. what you said means. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> what have you done for me lately? You know, that's, that's like totally the mentality in the corporate world. Let's transition out. Exactly. So that's just how I came about the truce and just to like easy digestible nuggets of try to break down a like completely complex problem to kind of, Hey, how can you approach and understand it? What, what system did you, cause you said you took 2000 informational interviews. Did you have a system in place for follow up or was it just kind of like shooting from and the they, hip, just trying to have as many conversations as possible. And these were like cups of coffee, not job interviews, right? Right. right yeah. Informational okay. interview job, you know, a cup of coffee, phone calls. Most of them were, Mm -hmm. uh, virtually or on, on phone calls. Uh, truthfully, Greg, uh, I didn't have a process. I was survival. So I was like, don't, I recommend people don't do what I did. Cause I would talk with 10 people a day. Right. And like, I would end a call and then get on another call and it would take me a couple minutes to figure out who the heck I was even speaking to. Um, but I have a BS, you know, a little bit so I can be like, Oh, okay, let me talk. And they want to know, I didn't know who they were, but it really wasn't efficient. Um, so yeah, there wasn't, I'm, I'm, I like processes and stuff, but I'm, I have a buddy, he has to write everything down. There's spreadsheets, all of that. And it's like I said about writing the book, it was all here. I just sat down and started typing. Right. And I can visualize it and people are like, you're a nut. And I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Um, that's just work works for me. So I did follow back up. There was certain ones now, truthfully, most of those, like any conversation that might've been enjoyable, not enjoyable, but like, ah, eh, not too useful. And like, but there's certain ones where I'm like, Oh, I need to, I need to follow up with that person. I need to keep in touch. And through that, it was really just a, a journey of self-discovery of like, what do I want to do? Who am I work? Let alone where can I fit? Like, let's just start with me first and figure out this part of the equation before I figure out the rest of it. And what were some As of your we key takeaways, I guess, like from like, what, what did you learn about yourself through those conversations? I, I mean, I'm sure that it's, those true, the transition truths are some of them, but like, what did you learn from those conversations about what you wanted to do next? What was important to you? Because I think that's, that's part of the problem of transition, right? Is, is there so there, you have so many options for the first time and you just, it's what direction do you want to go? And there's a lot of things you just like, you just won't know until you get started um, in a job. So, yeah. Yeah. In many ways, the military is easy, right? I want to be that. I want to be a SEAL. Okay, here's how you go do it. I want to be a ranger. Here's how you, whatever you want, to, a pilot, go do it. You follow that. But now you could do anything. But like, also let's go, anything doesn't necessarily pay me money. <laughs> so like, how do I make money doing anything if I'm going to go that route? So for me, it was really just figuring out what it was to be a banker on Wall Street. And I quickly learned, I do not want to be a banker. That is not for me. It, you know, no. I tell by the appearance. Um, but I started like, <laughs> okay, let me process of elimination. Let me, I have some assumptions. Let me turn them into facts, but really just let me learn this new environment. Cause it's so foreign, but it's really the same way. If we are going to, you know, deploy to Iraq, 
let me dive in and learn the culture and the problem set. So then I could, you know, best apply myself to uh, create a solution. That's same thing here. So it's just figuring that out. Do you, I know you went and worked for Accenture after, and you got your, your executive MBA. I'm assuming that those were good stepping stones in learning about the process, but you're happy you're no longer doing those anymore. Yeah, correct. I mean, really the MBA was long story short. I wanted to go full time to Dartmouth, the tuck school mm -hmm. business business. I was going to go up there for two years, do my transition and I got waitlisted. And I had put a year of my life. I traveled three times up there, like 21 hour drive each way, like networked my butt off and I got waitlisted and I felt like a failure. And my buddy, uh, who's another, uh, in special forces captain went to West point. He's like, Holy crap. That's awesome, man. You got, you made the wait list. And I was like, dude, that's a failure. He's like, dude, you're like 37 years old. You got your college degree online. And, um, you got waitlisted, which means like, if you probably stay there long enough, you could get in, just they're going to wait to see what's happening. Uh, it changed my perspective of like, okay, but really it gave me a goal. And that's, I had a lot of stuff going on in my personal life at the time, but it gave me a laser focused thing to like, just like, let me go to selection or let me prep for mm -hmm. this mission. It gave me something to laser focus on and then had an awesome experience. You know, when I pivoted said, okay, I'm going to do the executive MBA route at Cornell. I, had an awesome experience there of learning, but also now people may not understand what a Green Beret is or what a soldier is or something, but a lot of people in the business world don't understand what the heck a Cornell MBA is, right? Yeah. So it was like, but also it was like, there's many facets to why I did it. And then same with learning uh, and growing at Accenture was just like, okay, what's it like out here um, in the outside of the military, outside of uniform and learning business terms and in the environment and certain things. And I think that's one thing so many people are like, cause that was my plan. Stay in management consulting, boom, start my own management consulting practice, like boom. And then quickly realized I need a pivot cause that doesn't sound like fun. And, and we're not beholden to sound. If we try some venture and it doesn't work, try another one. If we don't like a company, try another one. You don't like an industry, try a different industry. We don't have to like, stay and do it you know it's not the military more where it says three years go and that I think was that's probably big the biggest thing, thing. For, for veterans to understand is you don't have to stick it out i know so many veterans are like no 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 if i if i quit i failed if if i if i don't stay here then i wasn't able to cut it it's like if you don't like this isn't this isn't where you take a, a hardship tour and you have to just stick it out and you're going to get something better on the other side if you're not happy if it's not lining up with what you want you can leave and there's no issues about it. You tell a company that you're like, Hey, this was not a good fit for me. And I recognize that early I left They're They're probably going to respect you a whole lot more than saying, yeah, I lingered at this company doing mediocre work just because I didn't want to admit that it wasn't a good fit. Definitely. Hey, Amen. I mean, it's okay. It's okay to switch. Right. But there's that loyalty piece. Some people feel there's like, Oh, you feel like a failure. If you have to, it's like, no, I'm mean, like, I get over pride a little bit and that's like putting our ego aside is probably the biggest thing for most people uh, in general, veteran, not veteran is like, take that ego, throw it out the door and uh, let's, let's work hard and use our brains and uh, make ourselves a success. Absolutely. And so uh, your, your story just screams the, the ability to find something you want to do, put your, put your mind to it and accomplish it. Like start out at a trailer park being like, I don't want to end up here anymore. I'm going to work hard, join the army, um, crush it in the army, you know, getting army drill, drill instructor or drill sergeant, sorry, drill instructor is a uh, Marine Corps, drill sergeant of the year, deciding you want to go Green Berets, making it through that. Walk, walk us through your, your life process of, of seeing these goals and how you were able to attain them. Because not, each one of those in itself would, would be an accomplishment and you just keep stacking them on each other. Yeah. I mean, I've been fortunate and I, I had a, a friend ask me one time, he's like, how'd you do it, man? And I was like, I just, I just did. It. I willed myself to, and he's like, yeah, yeah. But if I showed up to selection or wherever and was like, I'm going to do this. He's like, I'd be done by noon. I'd quit. But he's like, you didn't. I was like, well, maybe I'm too stupid, right? Or too stubborn to like, just like not give up. So, but it's all very different, right? If you go through like going to a prestigious university, doing that is much different than, selection right but truthfully or a mission in afghanistan or iraq but it's it's a mindset 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I will succeed. Doesn't mean I don't ever have self doubt. I don't ever have imposter syndrome because that does happen, but it's like, I'm going to do this. I, I can do this. And it sounds a little cliche, but positive thought. And I always think back to like selection's an easy one, right? Like it's 2 a.m. You're walking through the woods. It's freezing. You're by yourself. You could quit, right? And it, it there's times when that can enter your mind and people will go, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. Well, you're saying the word quit to me. Like you're already getting that word in your vocabulary where it's just like one more step, one more step to the next tree, to the mm-hmm. next ridge line. And that's really what has what I've done, whether you go back from way is it early age, there's many things could have detoured me, but what's that next step and just keeping focus on that. And then, okay, the next one and the next one. And not really, we talk even with our kids, like, Oh, they're like, Oh, this problem's so huge. Like it's a huge problem. And it's like, yeah. How do you eat an elephant? You know, it's little silly things like that, but so many people get, you know, they can't see the the forest for the trees or they can't, really focus because it's like, oh, there's so much to do. And it's like, what can I do right now? What's the one task? And just keep repeating it, right? What's the next important task? And just keep keep working, right? And to me, not having someone tell me I can't because they don't control it. So, so many people, you aren't going to amount to not, nothing. You aren't going to be able to do that. You're colorblind. You're not going to be able to go special forces. You're trailer trash. You aren't going to be able to go in Ivy League University. You're this. You're, you're enlisted guy. You're not going to be able to you can listen to them or you can use it as fire and just keep like going and, and blaze a path. And that's, that's really, and, and I truly feel like it came from my upbringing, you know, that rough upbringing. I wouldn't be where I was if it wasn't for that. Mom didn't graduate high school. Dad barely graduated high school. Both factory workers lost their jobs. Uh, but I saw hard work. Now, mm-hmm. not the smartest work, uh, but I saw hard work, right? Hey, go punch the clock every day at the factory, do that. But I was like, I, I need to change my, my surroundings. And then, uh, cause I don't want to go back to that. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's a, a, I, a big, big factor is understanding hard work versus effective work, but being able to, to do both, you know, don't just spin your wheels in the mud, recognizing when, when you're not getting traction, but then also, um, knowing when to put the the pedal down and and be able to make significant gains when when you find the, find the right path. Yeah. I think going back to your point about the next, just doing the next right thing or doing the next, just the next thing that you needed to accomplish to achieve that. Like selective ignorance is like definitely a, a thing and just getting during times of adversity, having tunnel vision is, is a superpower and not letting anything creep into your mind. I think that that's, truly one of the most powerful mindset tools out there it, it definitely does and I, and people ask me so i i had a bald eagle fly by the window so like i flip out at bald eagle so i'm like <laughs> oh you wait you guys are still talking i should be paying attention here um uh, the much yeah, cooler no, version it, of squirrel yeah exactly <laughs> uh but people ask me all the time like about writing the book right oh by the way i was working at Accenture full-time during that and nights and weekends doing my stuff with Cornell and I published the book, right? Time management. Now, did I sleep much? No, not quality sleep. Did I do anything else during that time period? Like play video games or um, YouTube or, you know, watch Netflix or the, you know, whatever the Kardashians, whatever show you watch. No, I was like, but I was managing it. So when people are always like, I don't have time. It's, you got time. It's just, what are your priorities? And I break it down to, what am I willing to sacrifice to, to earn this? Am I willing to die? Not like, Hey, bullshit, I'll die. But like, am I really willing to die for this goal? If not, then are you committed? And you're just like, Oh, this will be nice to have. But also that, what are those motivations to help you through that sacrifice? Like whatever it is, whether it's your kids or it's your goals, like, Hey, if you're willing to sacrifice for and, you know, deal with the discomfort. Okay. But so so many people aren't right. So many people are like, "Mm, that's, that's hard. Yeah. Life's hard. You know, you can, you can attack it or you cannot, but remembering those motivations and what you're willing to sacrifice, those two things have helped me out. Well, just having the, the distinction in your mindset too, you know, you're talking about how both your parents were factory workers, one 
barely finished high school the other didn't you very easily could have been like this is what i have i'm a victim i had shitty circumstances and and this is the 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 uh, hand i was dealt but instead you're like no i don't want this now I can push forward i i can see what i don't want so i can push in a different direction and keep seeing what what fits you know maybe not finding the right thing right away maybe you find another dead end or another struggle point and you keep pushing around it but you're feeling around in the dark looking for something that that is better than what you had as opposed to just being wallowing in your own misery yeah and to be to be very frank and blunt like i was also sexually assaulted as a young kid right so it's like mm-hmm. do do i let that control me do i let the oh we're poor do i my, i failed ninth grade english and I had to go to summer school all year so i didn't get held back in a grade like i there's so many stuff i i could have but it's like I didn't know it at the time, but now it's like, do you want to be the victim of your story or the hero? You get a choice because everyone deals with adversity. I don't care if you're a rich millionaire, you're born with a silver spoon or you're dirt poor, wherever you come from, everyone has adversity and it's all just relative to where they're at. It's how do you overcome it? Uh, that's, that's, that's a great point. And with, with that, you know, you, you've had some great messages you, you've put out on, on LinkedIn. How did your, your LinkedIn journey begin? Was that while you were at TAPS, they told you to get a, a, a LinkedIn account and you just kind of ran with it? Or was that something you saw along the way? Uh, uh, oddly yeah. enough, uh, I didn't go to many transition courses in the military because I thought they all sucked. So I still have my book and really they had give you a book and like I wrote my name in it and Corey, my fiance founder, she's like, are you being tell me you wrote a book on this, but you actually didn't do what you were supposed to do from them. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, cause it sucked. But um, yeah, so it was, Hey, let me, let me connect with people. Again, I need information. I need to grow this network and build relationships so I can figure out what I'm going to do next. Then it kind of transitioned to, Oh, I see I'm helping people. And then, Corey's really like, Hey, you see the impact you're having on people? Like show more of yourself. So there was people have said like a distinct phase, like a few years back of like, there was a shift, right? And it was really Corey seeing like, Hey people, this is making a difference, but you have to open up and be a little uncomfortable. And I was like, okay, like meh. there was a lot more cussing involved in that, but I was like, okay. And it's been a process to like, uh, do that. And that's how it's evolved to where, you know, using my platform today. No, it's, it's a fantastic platform. And I love the stuff you're putting out, especially uh, the, uh, the nugget you put out on, on Valentine's day. And then you shit all over Greg's parade. Oh, <laughs> taking please. his wife to Paris. <laughs> please. Did you guys end up in Bar- Baltimore, Herb? No, no, we didn't. But uh, no, we, uh, Corey actually got sick. So we, we spent the other day in the ER, uh, you know, the oh, most no. romantic Ooh. place there is, uh, all, all's, all's going to be good. But uh, yeah, so we're rain check on the, uh, uh, festivities uh, for that. But it, like for us, you know, we're balancing, we got four teenagers, two that are in college, two in high school in different states, uh, as far as the kiddos. So it's, it's always a challenge of like, when do we find some us time? And that's probably a big thing talking about like post military for anyone. Like how do I focus on our, or how do we focus on our relationship? And to be truthful, that laser focus goal of like, I will make selection or I will die. I will accomplish this mission, make it through this ambush or I will die. I will graduate isn't the most conducive for relationships and like feelings. Right. So I'm still a work in progress in that of like, Oh, feelings actually matter. Cause like I've took them and like jammed them all the way down to where they're in my boots. Cause it's like, we, we don't got time for feelings. Like let's, let's accomplish the mission and opening those feelings up and like embracing that has, has been like a personal journey for over the last few years. Yeah. That's I'm in the same boat. Like, cause I'm so performance oriented and, and the military drills it into you. So, you know, Kevin and I've got this podcast going now. We've got the Vetchpreneur Collective that we're building out. Just There's so many things that we're working on right now that we want to just, that, we, that we're throwing ourselves at. And it can be easy to, uh, to let, you know, relate. I mean, relationships, are the, that's the first thing that'll go by the, go to the wayside, I think is like, you'll, you'll start, you'll start putting away time with your, or giving away time with the wife. Um, especially when you got kids, it's just a, it's just a, a really tricky part of the transition process. I think it is. And yeah. Cause like, okay, work, cause we need to pay the bills and then kids cause they're kids and they, they give us that look. And then it's like, okay, us maybe, but 
like for me, I got stuff going on at service now. I do some special projects with fire department coffee. I do some speaking engagements. I keep whatever I do on LinkedIn ongoing. Um, we're in the process of writing a book, <laughs> uh, a larger a second book. book. Yeah. Like not yeah. transition focused, but like life book. Right. And doing that. And then, Oh, by the way, we should probably go on a date night. Right. Like let's figure this out. Um, but we're prioritizing it equally. Right. Like, cause if we don't have one, the other isn't going to matter. So we're very good about keeping each other honest of like, Hey, it's, it's late at night. Shh shut that laptop, you know what I mean? Or put the phone down um, because at some point we have to focus. It, it admittedly, um, sometimes I have to do that for Corey, but oftentimes she has to do to me and be like, Hey man, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. And sometimes that might be, a, Hey, F you. And then like, Oh yeah, you know what? I'm sorry about that. You're right. Uh, so it isn't all roses and rainbows, but uh, we're holding each other accountable and, and our teammates in this journey. I think I got that's, a great that's show for you guys, Herb. Love is blind. Season six going on right now. It is it's fire, man. Like I'm telling you, there's some good drama going on, some reveals that are going on tonight in episode two. So I'm I'm excited for my for my date night with uh with the bride. Nice. I to plug it here. I'm not getting paid. We're not getting paid by uh Love is Blind. There's no promotion. Oh, more channel? What what channel is that on? I have no idea. I think it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Oh, Check it? it out. That's true. I guess yeah. everything's on streaming now. You don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what they have over there in, in the Netherlands. Are you guys, you guys have the internet? We've got internet. That's it though. <laughs> That's it. I'm hooked up to a car battery actually right now. Bicycles in the internet. That's what you have. Yeah. But I'm, I'm actually riding a bike right now to power my entire house. <laughs> That's uh, that's how it's actually working. <laughs> Wait, I, uh, I, I couldn't agree more though with the, the stuff about, having your your spouse on board and, and you mentioned his, his teamwork and it, i think greg you you put it in a post the other day that the the most important business decision you'll ever make is who you marry because that's that's a business partner you're stuck with 24 hours a day seven days a week um and and all your decisions affect their their decisions and their decisions affect your decisions um so it's it's not something to take lightly i know in the military it's i see it i saw it all the time People just getting married because they want to get out of the barracks. They just want to get that extra pay. They don't truly recognize the the significance of that decision. Um, so having somebody, and this is me getting on my soapbox and preaching, but having somebody that that you can trust, that you respect, um, and that you can rely on to be a a full fledged partner in in life is is so important. It's, it's what's made me uh, able to accomplish what what I've done since leaving the military. Um, you know, I've, I've bounced around. I, I had a job as a recruiter that lasted about 10 months before I left and started my own company. And that was the first big conversation we had about career stuff was, what am I, what am I going to do? Should I, should I stay with this company and, you know, get 20% commission that's getting reset at the end of the, the year? We had, we had COVID and we were going for a walk trying to philosophize about the, the coming year. Um, and basically the decision I came to was, I'm basically going to be in the same starting point, whether I go back to work or start my own company. So I might as well have the the bigger upside and, and see where it goes. I can always go back and, and find another job if I, if I have to, but I really wanted to give this a try. And so having her support through that, having her support through continued entrepreneurship, pivoting from recruiting to the the veteran entrepreneur stuff, bringing on podcasts, the newsletter, the the community, all these things we're doing. If I didn't have someone supporting me behind the scenes, it, w it would not be a possibility. Amen. And, and to me, that's the biggest change. I'm just thinking like, I don't know, maybe around 10 years ago now, maybe nine years ago, they were like, hey, ISIS is about to overrun Baghdad. Herb, you're on a flight tomorrow. Go. Right. So I was like, roger that. Let's go get some. So I went home and like, I need to get more kit. And I'm like, oh, I should probably tell my wife. Right. Where <laughs> like it, the the wife wasn't in the equation. It's like, let's go, you know, like, Hey, we need you to deploy here. It wasn't like, Hey, sir, sir, major. I know you want me to deploy, but let, let me go talk to the missus and see how that's going to go over with no, it, like didn't enter. Right. Like school, whatever it is. So that's the biggest adjustment for me is like, it's not I. It's we're a mm -hmm. team and I'm still working progress on this because I'll be like, oh, and I'm like, oh yeah, what's this? Let's talk it over. But we're always talking it. So like we we know where we're at and like 
what's where we are at and like where we plan to be in the next couple of years and like does it fit within that cool does it not cool and if it's like hey a big decision let's talk about it let's work through it and figure out how it affects us not just oh that's more money or that's something i want to do Mm -hmm. so what's this new book you're working on i know you said it's more life stuff or is that behind behind a cloak right now no it's just more you know seeing that like the impact I've been able to have for people. So really uh, tell them more of my story and, and sharing it with people so they can learn. And, um, you know, in many ways be inspired though. I, I'll be admit, I'll admit, I hate saying that. And I felt sleazy just saying that right now, like, Oh, I'll inspire someone. Uh, or be like, Hey, I'm not the only one, you know, like someone else has gone through this. So really uh, that's what we're working on uh, doing it. And then with Corey's perspective, cause she sees a lot of the, behind the scenes, if you will. So, uh, and can see like some changes I've made from maybe five, 10 years ago. And it's like, wow, there's like an evolution and growth there. So her kind of insights and commentary too. Well, you, I mean, you you speak to so many, your, your life experience speaks to so many different people. I mean, you're, you've raised a neurodivergent son, you've got, you're dealing with diabetes, um, you know, the transition, um, it just, there's so many people that are that your story resonates with um, that I think it's important that you put out that book, especially with the following that you have and like people want to like know what's going on behind the scenes, right? And and get that glimpse. To yeah, because like, I think you humanize it all is, is really what it is. Yeah, admittedly, it's it's uncomfortable for me. I know people are like, what really? Like as much as you put on like, yeah, it's like all uncomfortable for me. But I see that and I get the message like, hey, like this x y and z or like and or like sometimes they're like dude i've been following your stuff for two years but like thank you like you don't know like six months ago i was ready to you know end it and you know you never know what's going on or i've been struggling with this so um it's it's just amazing to me that the impact you can have if you just open up and be a little open yourself so that that's what the book's about uh, is really to do that and to like just try to help people because I don't know how much longer I have on this planet, but I want to keep making the impact, and and that's uh, that's what I intend to do. And you, you mentioned, um, oh sorry, go ahead. You got a title yet? No, I, I yeah. a couple proposed, but no. Okay. Uh, with uh, with the coffee stuff, uh, fire firehouse. Fire department coffee. Firehouse coffee or fireman coffee? Fire department coffee. Um, how, how did you get involved with that? What, what's the story with, with what you're doing and where you see that going? Uh, I'm always looking for like, not just veterans, but especially a veteran who has like started their own business. And quite frankly, it has to be a good product. So let's start there. Like, uh, I'm not going to be involved with something mm-hmm. I don't like. So the product, but then how do you go about your business? Because yeah, there's dollars and cents and you got to worry about profit and loss, but like, how you do business is important to me and, and getting to know the folks there, you know, over a time span of months and getting to meet Luke, uh, one of the co-founders and hear his story of like leaving the Navy and then going in the, in the, uh, fire, fireman, fire department to like, Hey, I'm going to start this coffee, right. This evolution and just the way they're going about it. I was like, I think this is something special it, it, and no BS. I think it is something special. And I'm like, I would love to be involved in any kind of shape or form. So do some special projects with them, but it's um, most, most people would see like the social media type stuff, you know, like, Oh, you did a post about them, but it's like other stuff behind the scenes. Cause I, I believe in, I believe in the product and I believe in how they're going about business. Uh, so I was like, let's be a part of it. And that's, that's, it's one of those things that like surround yourself with good people and good stuff happens. And special projects so, has a, uh, a fancy name. What what type of stuff does it actually entail? Yeah, yeah, yeah l- lots of stuff, right? Kind of anything, but w- what do I have strengths in, right? Building relationships. Um, that's important for business, right? So building a lot of relationships, talking with people, um, kind of creating new pathways. So that's where a, a lot of what I'm doing. Now. You'll see over the next coming months, some big stuff for fire department coffee coming up that uh, it's going to be a great, and that's this much to do with me, almost none. It's, it's the brand and the company, but a lot of awesome stuff's about to happen uh, in the next few months. So I know it's going to be going through everybody's mind that is uh, listening to this podcast now. 
and I'm just going to ask the question, will there be a calendar with Herb Thompson in it? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't think anyone uh, needs to see me uh, okay. in a calendar or like um, Speedos or, you know, my board shorts or anything like those days, if there ever was a good time for it, it is not. <laughs> now. Um, so no, even though I've lost a bunch of weight, uh, no, no calendar, but may maybe, maybe I could be convinced. There we go. Maybe a like uh, that. Uh, beard wax or like men's grooming product. Mine. Ooh. Could Ooh, be a great spokesman like for that. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Is anyone listening? If they, hold on, is this on? Okay. If you would like me to sponsor you, the product's got to be good. And then uh, send me some and I'll try it out. No, it's a, uh, it's all good. I, I love for, look forward to it. I don't know what will happen. Um, hey, maybe we'll have a shoe coming out. Maybe we'll do some beard stuff. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out, but I know I'm going to have fun and, and try to surround myself with good people. With your, um, with your experience in the, uh, in, in SF, you know, what, what type of skills for, for guys that are getting out, what type of skills do you think are the most valuable and how have you been able to, to translate those? I know that's the mm -hmm. hardest part for, for guys is, is like, to, how do I translate fast ripping out of a helicopter or shooting a gun or talking on the radio to something that Accenture would care about? Yeah, no, great point. And none of those three do they care about. Uh, so I was actually talking with a, a Green Bray that who's getting out uh, last week about this. And it was really like two things that seem very simple, but relationship building. You can't have a business with our, now you could, that could be in recruiting. That could be in sales. You can put it across any kind of business, any part of the business, but relationship building is important. And quite frankly, that is what, especially guys, special force green braids. That's what we do build relationships and work by with and through an indigenous force. So like, it's just a different indige force, right? It's, it's corporate America, but it's an indigenous force to be, keep that mindset and the problem solving. I know that, Oh, I'm a problem solver, but spend a lot of time in unconventional warfare planning and figuring out how do we do this? That, that translates. Now we have to articulate that because no one, when you walk in and I don't grab my beret that's behind me and go, Hey, and they're like, uh, all right, funny hat, dude. Like, what do you mean? Like you, you got to be able to articulate that and communicate it. But I look at the same way, just like when we showed up in, we'll say Afghanistan or some other country, we didn't instantly walk in with a whole lot of credibility. In some cases we may have, but like that gets you like in the door. You didn't get shot walking through the gate, but like now how do you stay? You you mm -hmm. gotta you gotta show your credibility and be able to speak and talk and sell your team or sell your mission. It's the same thing here, right? So them the skills do translate. It's just not the the cool guy stuff of like shoot, move and communicate and like I can hold my breath or I can do this kind of parachute jump or I can you know, choke you out 97 different ways. Like no one cares. Yeah. I think that's I, I, such a huge, I mean, you have to, you have to anticipate the problems of the company that you're going to be interviewing for. And then you have to tell them or dissect how you're going to solve that problem for them and how you've done it in the past and why that is relevant to that position. And, and it requires some, some homework and, and, having coffee chats and, and going and having calls with people that work at that company to truly understand the problems that they're, that they're facing and what that position is going to be up against. Uh, but that's, yeah, I think that that's, that's spot on advice. Yeah, having, having the, the wherewithal to, to look ahead, what, what the role is breaking down from, you know, the job requirements, seeing what skills they need and learning how to associate what you've done beyond the the superficial stuff of like, yeah, it's fast roping out of a helicopter. It looks really cool. And that's kind of what you say people or tell people you do while you're in, but how do you, how do you turn that on its head and actually dive into the, the more intricate details of, you know, essentially like um, cross collaboration between the air crews and the ground crew. You have the, the Hirschcast masters, you have training, you have maintenance mm -hmm. of, of equipment. Um, you have communication amongst each other you have training and discipline, um, rehearsals, all those things go into doing a, just like even a fast roping evolution, uh, let alone doing an actual combat. Um, so going beyond the, the superficial aspect of what people can see versus diving into what's going on behind the scenes that actually makes it 
uh, impactful. And that's, that's how it is with most companies anyway. Like, you know, Apple, for example, what you see is, is the, is the iPhone is the, is the Mac computer. Um, but what you don't see going on behind the scenes is the, the, the R and D, the market analysis, the, the technology, um, implementation, the discussion with, with the customers to see what's needed and also having the, the vision to look ahead and like with the, um, with, with their move to get rid of the, uh, the headphone jack, they're like, we're just, we, we anticipate that people are going to be using wireless headphones. So we're just going to take that thing out. Um, and we're going to deal with the, uh, the bitching and moaning from the consumer for a while until they realize that we were right. And they're happier with that decision. No, definitely. And, and seeing that, and I think it's hard to sell, right? When you're like, Hey, I have these capabilities. Like a lot of people don't believe it until they see it. They're mm -hmm. like, Oh wait, you, not that we can read, you know, uh, we're not talking to goats, you know what I mean? And, you know, reading their minds, but like, Oh, wow. You, you got a different perspective and how can you go into a room and instantly know who we need to talk to and all that. Sometimes we have to show them and it can be a little art hard to articulate those skill sets. But that just means you got to find the right place, right? The place that values you and understands or get into a place, maybe not where you think you should be and go, hey, I'll prove myself and then mm -hmm. work my way up uh, through doing it. And yeah, tons of skill sets that that translate. It's just it's all here, right? If we give up, like you were talking about the cool guy stuff, uh, like people are like, hey, have you been shooting like. No, ammo costs money, man. Like it's not free anymore. <laughs> so I'm not going to go burn 2000 rounds on a range because now that's out of my bank account. Yeah, no, no more El Prez's where you go through an entire magazine as quickly as you can. Yeah. Those are so much no. fun. I mean, sometimes you have to get through the ammo so you don't have to turn it back in. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like then, cool, because I didn't have to pay for it now. Mm -mm. It's a very different story. Yeah, not so and, much. and something you mentioned um, that I think a lot of guys need to consider and this is one thing that we went through at the honor foundation uh, was figuring out what your life priorities are and the big five that they used uh, and you know this isn't yeah. all this isn't um, all encompassing there are there are other ones outside of this but the, the big five that i liked were you know enjoying what you do enjoying who you do it with um, amount of time you're either commuting or traveling for work how much money you're spending and how many hours you you work each week um, and and figure out what the order is and that order doesn't have to stay static for your entire life like the, the money one everyone's like oh no no money's not important to me even though they're like i really like that that six <laughs> yeah. seven figure paycheck whatever um but at different stages of your life that that is important are you trying to buy a house do you have kids about to go to college um at that point yeah maybe you do take the higher paying job and, and drop down some of the other priorities maybe you don't enjoy what you do as much to build up that that nest egg so that you can cruise on the other side but the the big ones, yeah, enjoying what you do and who you do it with, that's that's immensely important. I mean, that's that's why I started doing this stuff, working with with veterans about entrepreneurship. That's why I brought Greg on, um, because we're just like we're we we're so in line. He, I, don't, I don't know if you looked into it, but our our paths were eerily parallel. I went seals, he went green beret, but everything else was almost identical. Yeah. We got into recruiting. He did med tech, I did life science. We started our own recruiting businesses. Um, realized that we like entrepreneurship. So we started uh, talking about entrepreneurship and working with veterans. I was like, do you want to just do this together? <laughs> kind of like a, a great marriage proposal. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yeah. Or best friends. I was, I was going with marriage yeah. proposal, but yeah, best friends yeah. works too. Um, <laughs> yeah, have, having somebody that you can uh, bounce ideas off of and, and share a vision with and, and, and move forward together, that makes the job so much more enjoyable. Uh, and then also when you double that with, with what you're doing, that it's enjoyable. You're just like, I'm happy. I don't care if I'm, I'm not making $250,000 a year. I'm, I'm very content with what I'm doing, who I'm doing it with. Uh, and, and the, the impact that we're leaving on the community. No, definitely. And I, I like how the honor foundation approaches it. And, and I'd read, you know, Adam Grant, I think most people know who Adam Grant is. He's like, don't ask kids what they want to be when they grow up. Like, and everyone's been asking, like, I don't know, I'm 13. Heck you're 46 and you don't know what the hell you're doing. So you want, <laughs> But like, I knew at early age, I want to be a soldier, right? Like, that's what I wanted to be. Boom. Green Beret. And then I had a drill sergeant too. I was like, okay, accomplish it. What am I going to do now? But I was talking to my uh, son just yesterday. He, he's in high school. And I was like, hey, man, I don't, hey, what do you want to do when you graduate? Right. But it was like, what do you like? And he's like, I like science and math. And I was like, would you do that if you didn't have to do that homework? And he's like, yeah, I don't like it that much. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like 
figure out what you like to do. And sometimes you got to do stuff you don't necessarily want to do, but it's like, I try to lead them towards that instead of like, what are you going to do? You're going to go be an engineer. Like uh, our one, our one son in college should be an engineer, but it wasn't like, Hey, you're going to go this route. And like, what is it? It's like, Oh, you genuinely like that. Let's figure out what it is instead of like, but it's hard. And like, we put that pressure on kids, but we're all talking here and we're like, 20, 30, 40 year old people who don't know what the heck they want to do. Right. And it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, you, you kids should know what to do. So it's kind of the same thing of just like figuring that out of like, what do you like? And that's, that's, um, what do you like and how can you get paid to do it? <laughs> and, or can you, right. But I also know some people like, I hate my job, but I got a brand new truck outside. And if I get pissed about my job, I'll walk outside and wash my truck. And I'm like, that's cool. That's not me though. I can't do that. Um, but some no. people are that way. Man, I love that reframe of what do you, like, would you do it if you didn't have to? Because I, I think back to like going to college. I mean, I, I went to college because that's just what everybody did in my town. Like you, you graduate high school and you go to college, like your parents probably pay for it because you're in an affluent area and you graduate and go work a corporate job. Like that was the, that's what, I, that's what all my friends have done. Nothing wrong with it, um, but you're very much fit into a box from the the very get go. It's like, what what do you like to do in school? And okay, so, but that's that's it. You're inside of that box. It's not what do you enjoy doing and how can you monetize it. And that's I think that that is an exciting part about being a parent now is like having that knowledge or like that that foresight to like teach that to your kids. Yeah, it is. And not having that, like, obviously a college degree carries weight, right? It it can open you up for opportunities, but is it the only way we have another son that's like in the trades? He said, I'm not going to college. He's in high school, but like he already makes good money working on the weekends, doing this trade towards getting his like certification and online, like to where he's going to be making good money when he graduates high school in the Mm -hmm. trade. So like, if he was like, Hey, I want to go to college. We'd be like, you're an idiot. Like, keep doing what you're doing. Cause like, you're about to make buku money. And it's like, but I think just reframe it. Like, what do you like to do? And like, how can, and maybe it's a journey to get there and you go try some stuff out and you don't. And if you don't know, I think that's a lot of what I look for me. The military was, it allowed me to grow up and figure life out. Not that I had it all figured out when I, but there was a lot of stuff. I ended up staying 20 years, but figured it out. Well, that's what college does for a lot of people, right? Go there for four years, kind of figure out who you are, evolve, mature, but you have to pick a degree on day one usually. And that yeah. kind of leads to your decisions the rest of your life. And in, in some cases, cause, cause of the dollar amount involved. So that's what we're trying to do is just like trying to approach it differently. I'm not like, Hey, what do you want to be when you grow up and like do this? Cause like it's just different. Yeah. A lot of people have that, that sunk cost approach where they're like, well, I picked this major. So I guess I'm going to, I'm going to stick it out and, and, and make this work. Cause I don't want to, take any longer or spending any more money, but all it does is, is lead to a whole lot more misery. But I, I really love what you, what you mentioned earlier of, of not, not asking in terms of the title that people want to, you know, what your kids want to do is, is a title. Like, do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to be a lawyer? Do you want to be a, a fireman to instead ask what the things that they enjoy doing and finding the job that matches that. I mean, it's, it's like with, with, with recruiting and, and people applying for jobs, don't search for a job title, search for a job task and requirements that, that align with you. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes reality comes in. Cause it's like, I only like to play video games and do makeup. And it's like, well, it's probably, you could figure out a way there, to make money. YouTube but you're, channels for that. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to have to work, you know, or is there like another way? What are some of those, like you're talking about the task, like, can I break that down further? And what is it about that that you like? And then go towards that. And I, yeah, talk about recruiting and aligning veterans, non-veterans to roles. I think most places are horrible at that. And it's just like job total dollar amount. All right. I'll suffer through that. It's worth the suffrage to get X amount of dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, what the, companies, the big items go on. What companies do you, uh, do you think do a good job in the, like, would you steer veterans towards um, to apply for transitioning out? Do you have a, a list of companies that you think are going to make this? I will not call, uh, say it about any company I work with because that would not be a subjective answer, right? What I will say sure. is I, what I've felt going on going out is anything huge, right? Large, it's hard to get it right. 
Um, you know what I mean? So like, Hey, if you put a lot of time and effort to hire one person, you can get that right. So smaller companies, because you get to know each other, the people, the relationships, when the company has a hundred thousand people, it's kind of like in the military, like insert, right? Insert, insert into the thing. So I, I feel like oftentimes, not that bigger companies don't do it. It's just at such scale, it's hard to replicate where in a smaller company, especially people from our communities, Green Bray, Seals, all that, I think can really thrive in that either their own business or a very, you know, a small, smaller business where they can have um, uh, multiplying effects. Yeah, I, I would say, I mean, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. The it, part of my transition was I moved into medical device sales and worked at a hundred thousand person company. Not, I don't think they have a hundred thousand people, but it's Baxter Healthcare. Yeah. And it was good in the sense that it was predictable. It was bureaucratic, just like the military is. You're just a cog in the wheel. Um, so it was a nice, like first stepping stone out. But ultimately I found out very quickly that that was not what I would end up wanting to do and found something smaller where I was much more um, fulfilled working at a smaller startup company. Like that was, that was it for me and it was my first taste of getting in the startup world and entrepreneurship. And so for me, that spot on, like that's, that's what I really took flight for my career. I think. Yeah. I think that fulfillment, that purpose, what's the team, like we had that in the military, we had a team or a community, we had a purpose, we had an identity, like finding all that again. Um, sometimes could be, but everyone's different. Some people enjoy the large companies. I just think in general, it's, it's a little easier, obviously the smaller the size. It really, really comes down to those priorities again, you know, is, is money and, um, you know, financial security, job security, even though that's kind of a subjective term nowadays anyway, um, app, Apple and Facebook are firing, no one's safe. Uh, yeah. but you know, Nike, what, what is it you're looking for? Do you just want to be able to, to show up, punch the card, not bring work home with you, not be super stressed about work, collect a paycheck and, and not have to worry about you know, leaving and, and interviewing for another job every couple of years. That's a great fit for, for a certain type of person. And then there's some people that that would be their absolute nightmare of like showing up every day with the, the same thing, working with the same people, coming up with the same ideas, you know, very little creative aspect to it. Um, so I think it really just comes down to veterans sitting down, especially if they're married, you know, what, what are their yeah. priorities? Have the conversation with, with your spouse and, and think what, what is our, our one-year goal? What is our five-year goal? God forbid, what is your 10-year goal? You know, have, have the yep. big visions of what you want to do um, and come up with a plan to, to get there. I know with, with my wife and I, we wanted to be able to travel. We didn't want to be stuck around asking for permission to take uh, time off. We were in Costa Rica. And we're like, how can we do this more? Um, <laughs> it was during, I got three weeks off for, for yeah. terminal and we're just ch chilling down there. Um, and that's how I got into the recruiting side because it gave me a lot of that flexibility. Uh, and so y you need to have a, a, a come to Jesus talk with yourself of what is actually important and not what yeah. you think is important. And then it'll take some time. You know, this isn't going to be something you sit down and do in a, in a 10 minute exercise, put it on a piece of paper and, uh, and, and send it. Uh, th this might be done over days, weeks, or even months while you're figuring it out. Yeah. And it can evolve. Like where I was getting out five years ago, five years ago, I just signed out on my, you know, retirement leave. What I was looking for, that is different than now. Right. And probably mm -hmm. slightly different than what I'm going to be looking for two years. Cause like we, we talk about our house, like, in two years, we won't have any kids in high school anymore. So stuff changes, right? Like, okay, what do we, do we get to that point? And then we're, we're moving on. So it's always just reassessing that and that communication. That's what we're looking at. Here's one that yeah. thing that I wish I would have done interviewing out of, out of the military and just in general, like now moving forward is like, if you go into an interview before you go into that interview, because everybody's got their questions that they need to ask before you accept that job offer, you should have questions written out from your wife that she needs answered or your significant other that they need answered um, in order for you to feel comfortable taking that job. Cause that's something that I, I don't think I did a, a really good job with um, coming out of the military, but something moving forward that I would definitely do just because it ma make sure that there's no surprises heading into a, a new opportunity. Yeah. In our house. Surprise. Yeah. In our house, we talk about it, right? If we're going, I'm going for this interview or her, like, or even this opportunity, like, Truthfully now with like speaking engagements, like 
we don't want to travel as much, right? Because we're limited time with the kids still left when they, maybe they care to stay with us now and hang out, but like, Hey, they're soon going to be out of high school and not have it. So like, we're very diligent about like, let's talk about this. Is it, you know, does it meet some of the buckets of what we're looking for? Like, okay, maybe, Oh wait, we already got something that quarter. Let's push it. But we do the same thing for interviews. Like, so we're always talking about that and helping each other because two would be better than one, right? Two, two minds working on something. So, Always doing that. Great advice. Talk about your uh, your speaking engagement. So what, what does that look like? What are you getting into? Yeah. So again, kind of like sharing my insights. So sometimes it might be about, you know, veterans and like life after service. Uh, but some a lot of times, like you were saying earlier, it kind of translates across uh, most people's lives. So either just leadership in general or overcome adversity. So uh, anytime someone asks me to come speak, I always, again, just like it's a mission. Let's plan it. What are you looking for? What's the objective? All right, I'll build something for you. So like uh, one a few months back was up to Brown University and talking about life after service. And it was really a point of mo- like good conversation back and forth. And you never know what comes for those things. Or if it's at this, you know, this company, um, just kind of sharing the insights from my career journey and, and life lessons. And each one I tailor to that. So it's like I put time and effort into that. And then we do some for free too, right? For different organizations and nonprofits like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, we'll come in and speak, whether it's myself or Corey and I together talking about transition, hitting it from both sides. Um, we, we enjoy doing it. It's just, again, knowing where we're at now and be like, okay, in a couple of years, we can do it a lot more, but you know, we got to worry about the family. Now we got to worry about what pays the actual bills now and like what work can we build towards something? No, this is, this has been amazing information. Um, and I know you've been a, a wealth of, of knowledge for a lot of veterans and inspiring too, for, for a lot of guys as they're still in looking to get out or have already gotten out, um, and looking to figure out what to do next. Um, as we close out, you know, I know you had a, a few things on there. You have your, your book, the transition mission, um, you have firehouse or sorry, fire department, uh, coffee you're working on. I keep saying firehouse. There's a bar by us called firehouse. <laughs> uh, so you have firehouse coffee, your fire department coffee. Uh, I'll get this right one day. Kevin needs some knuckle drink. dragger. This is, this is the Marina me coming out. It's not written in crayon. You need some fire department coffee. So your brain starts you working know. for real. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you have your speaking engagement. Where, where can people find you for your your speaking engagements, other than through your LinkedIn? Yeah, the the website Herb Hyphen Thompson. That's that line that's not on the bottom, but up in the middle of the letters. Uh, for those English, hyphen not underscore. Yeah, challenged like I am, um, and that's just because they wanted too much money for without the hyphen. I'll be frank. So business decision, we'll put the hyphen in. Um, so yeah, you can find all that there to schedule. For that, find me on LinkedIn. Uh, Truthfully, I tell everyone, if you go through Corey, my fiance, she actually, uh, as a joke, but now uses it at email, she started, it's Herb's Handler at Gmail. Because (laughs) like, um, because I get so many messages, I may see some, I may not. But like, if you go to her, she's like, hey, what are you going to do about this? I'm like, oh, I don't know. We'll talk about it, right? Where if like messages, some days like, I may get 10 messages on LinkedIn or 20. Other days I may get, 200 and i'm like yeah i don't know what happened there yeah the, the linkedin messaging <clears throat> platform is pretty garbage i lose messages all the time and i feel terrible i've had a couple people that uh and on the connection side too i've had some people that ping me from the comment section like hey i sent you a connection request a week ago sorry <laughs> i'm trying yeah. I, I work as hard as i can to get through yeah. these but i just i don't want to be staring at that screen all day every day yeah i don't like if you send me a, i may see it because I'll, I'll scroll through because i just have so many like what sticks out and like i might not so she she's she's helpful for that and other do you, stuff but do you set up a um i just saw that linkedin allows for a an auto like out of out of office reply do you have something like that that directs it over to her or do you um do you just tell people to when, when you're in passing e- email my fiance instead no because that way i see who's committed to getting a hold of me. Uh, no, I just thought of that right now. Actually, I don't. No, I uh, I'm just like, if you're committed, <laughs> you'll find it. a way, right? Like, ping me 17 times, but not as message like a, Garcia. Not as like, oh, look at me. I love Message Garcia. We can talk about that another time. Um, but yeah, like, are you going to get it done? Like, cool. Like, or did you just send it one off? Oh, are you 
do you want to do that? Because people all the time want to ask me for veteran advice. Like, oh, can you? And I'm like, well, can you start with reading my book? Because I like put a little effort into putting that together. So if you haven't read that, like, we probably shouldn't even talk yet. Uh, mm-hmm. it's just to manage my time. And it sounds like being a, an a-hole, but it's like, you only have so much time in the day, right? So where am I going to, like I tell everyone, if you're going to ask something from them, they're, they're not going to be making their own money for themselves. They're not going to be spending time with their family. And they're not going to be sleeping. They're not going to be doing something they want to do. Take care of themselves, reading a book or working out, yoga, I don't care. So now you want them to do something for you. Well, like do your part too, right? And uh, uh, for that. So yeah, it's just not by on purpose. It's just like a lot of times I don't see stuff and like just or, or like literally physically can't respond to 50 people that are like, Hey, can we have a chat? And like, no, I, like uh, that's <laughs> that I, I could do math and that equals up to a whole lot of time. More than 24. I can, I can yeah. get to 24. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there, is there anything else that you, um, you've been working on you want to promote while, while here? No, that's it. I mean, you know, plus I got the old day job, if you will, at service now, we're a fortune 500 tech company getting, uh, uh, veterans and not just veterans, truthfully, anyone, right. Veterans, military, so, but anyone around the globe working to get them into new careers, right. And tech careers and learn that. So, uh, doing that. So I'm just, I'm just fortunate, uh, and, and feel gratitude for where I'm at in life and, uh, staying hungry for more. Awesome, man. I mean, it's, it's following the, the tenets of, of having multiple revenue streams. Don't be tied down to just that W2 salary come up with some other ideas to to keep things going exciting so you can cut things off if, if you need to definitely i mean the w2 salary is very good so i'm very fortunate uh but always yeah you know you, you gotta have multiple plans right you never know when you kind of push here push here and then you know go break off and do something or, or keep doing something the same so yeah uh pleasure to talk with you gents thanks for having me on uh very grateful for you having me on here and uh look forward to talking together again down the road Appreciate it. We'll Sounds jump into the message to Garcia man. then. Yeah. <laughs> cool.